Okay, so I have not been on in a while because I have a lot of um, disabilities. So I have not been, I just don't have the energy to be posting. And of course, I'm financially struggling at the time. Um, I wanted to do this because I don't think anybody in this country should go hungry. I don't think anybody anywhere should go hungry. But there is absolutely zero excuse for anyone in the United States to grow to go hungry period. There's no excuse for that. Our government has no excuse for that. A federal, state, even local level, your city, none. I look around my home and I have fields around my home that are neglected. It's a fire hazard because my city is a little country town really, is too lazy and placid and they want to spend the tax dollars on what they want. They don't really care about what's right or wrong. And, um, we even have a state representative that lives in my town and bragging about how he's fighting the opioid crisis because he's a conservative, but he won't address the infrastructure failure in his own city. He probably lives in so much privilege. He doesn't even know. I mean, he probably has all the connections, whereas a single mom who's disabled like me can't get a plumber to come out and fix a simple leak under the sink. And we've tried to fix it the best that we can, but it's kind of messed up down there. And so we have to like empty it out with like tubs and everything. And um, our government is failing us because it's full of corruption and greed and a lot of intentional, intentional creating of suffering to continue that control. Uh, you look at the top three money makers in the world. It's war, drugs, and sex, whether it's human trafficking, pornography, sex addiction, however you want to look at it. It doesn't have to be even just flat out porn. It can be a lot of filthy stuff. Just type in woman sexuality or sexuality women and girls on YouTube and you'll see where their priorities are. I mean, they're cracking down on predator catching videos, but they have no problem exposing your children to the most unspeakable of disgusting things. Um, same thing with Rumble, by the way. And so, so long as they're making money off their war, drugs, and sex, they don't care about you and they don't care about me. They don't care if you are hungry. So why should you care about the government anymore? We need to call it what it is, is tyranny. If you guys think this two-party system is working, you're delusional. You might should start looking into agorism and intentional communities and permaculture and polyculture and separating yourself from this tyranny. And um, some of you may not know how to grow food. You don't know how to do the basics because you spent your whole life under the reign of tyranny. So you don't know how to do anything because from the time you're five years old, you're put into a children's boot camp called school where they do things to you that if a parent did it, it would be called child abuse forcing children to have under three minutes to get from one side of a school to another to use a bathroom on their period would be considered um, child abuse if we did that at home. And I could go on and on about how the school system abuses children. And it kind of is like a pre-prison for them. You know, it teaches you how to either be a good soldier or a good prisoner. And um, not even good at teaching people how to be good employees anymore, obviously, right? Um, so many people can't find jobs. They have a lot of student debt and no job to show for it. Okay, so I have a field around my house. And it's a fire hazard. And no one's doing anything with it. I have chickens. Um... I have field peas and okra and wheat and oats and sunflowers that are just growing wild around in my yard. Not, not even trying. It's just volunteers. Okay. Field peas and, and like, you know, black eyed peas, they will fill you up. They're substantially filling. So are things like potatoes and sweet potatoes. These are extremely easy things to grow. Now, if some of you out there are thinking, well, I don't want to eat old fashioned Southern food. I want Taco Bell. Well, good for you. You know, I can't eat. I may go there once a month when I travel for a round trip to my um, pain doctor. And you have to pay. I pay more for the drink than for food if I get a drink because 
the men, the working class men go in there and eat in so they can get their money's worth of drinks and they will drink five gallons of sugary Coke, giving them the massive pot bellies and they're sitting there scarfing down. And I'm like, I just want one drink to go. I don't, why should I have to pay for those men over there to drink five gallons? Can I have a different charge? Why can't we, you charge us a different charge, like, you know, 99 cents or something, because I'm only getting this one drink one time, no refills, <laughs> right? Um, I don't usually like fast food or any kind of food out because it is too expensive. I will literally get the $2 burritos. The only option they have is like the dollar burrito, right? Everything else is like more, it's like ridiculous. Come get our grilled cheese taco, pay over $3 and you can dip it. It's like, are you kidding me? Me and my kids need $3 for all three meals for a day if we want to survive. And, you know, our food bank here is open like once a month for four hours. Yay. <laughs> really convenient if you have to be out of town, right? Okay. Now chickens, um, why, why like, like flood your town hall? You know what I mean? You guys get together. I don't do Facebook. I don't do DARPA's life log. If you guys are like selling stuff on Facebook marketplace and you don't mind the government, like watching everything you do, they do anyway. But I think it's the point of the matter that the day after they canceled the DARPA life log, Facebook came out. I just, the point of the matter and then brainwashing it, it grooms you into like, they praise narcissism on Facebook and conformity. It's kind of like that social credit score in China. And if you don't walk that line of conformity, you're chastised, you're shunned, you're ignored. And I, I don't like it, you know, so I don't do Facebook, but if you guys do get together, make groups and flood your town hall, flood, flood it, drive your city nuts and demand that there needs to be more community gardens and community chickens and say, look, if your local city government has the money to pay like guys to go say fix a street right with your tax dollars but they've been idiots for decades where they'll fix a street and then less than two weeks later the water guys come along and drill a hole to fix some plumbing and put a new pothole in the brand new street because they don't even bother to get together this is a whole this is a huge gimmick this is like a ponzi scheme that our city governments do right or they always put in new roads and within two weeks to two months, they have the water guys come around and go, oh, look, there's some plumbing issues we need to correct because our plumbing infrastructure is so old. We're being like doused of fluoride and chlorine and it's destroying. Like I have interstitial cystitis and I've had three animals. One has died. Three animals almost die from urinary blockages and it's all from the fluoride in the water. Look it up. Fluoride does cause stones. It does cause you to have blockages. And for me, it acts like interstitial cystitis where it scrapes down my insides and it hurts so bad and I have to pee every five minutes. I can't have fluoride. Like I literally have to have filtered water. I use the zero filters. If I don't have a filter, like I, I hurt so bad. I can't, I have to get up all night, and pee every five, 15 minutes. And so, you know, our water systems are already disgusting. Our infrastructures are old and they're, they're blowing their money. You know, they are, they're like, uh, laundering money. So they don't ever funnel it where it's supposed to. Right. And they're going to fix a road and then put new potholes in it. And then, oh, well, look, there's already potholes. So we need to fix the road again. And it's a never ending cycle of them writing off money so they can launder it, funnel it, hide it and blow our tax dollars. So demand that they hire a few people or, or, or get volunteers, you know, okay, look at every, okay. I was in master gardeners for, I don't know, a year or two. And um, I quit when COVID came along because there's just they were so pushy about like, um, if you want to come help us with the garden outside of City Hall, you need to wear a mask because you need to consider my husband's on oxygen and blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking, are you crazy, lady? You need to stay home. If you have a husband on oxygen, you don't need to be going out with your senior citizen friends playing in a public garden. If you're that worried about it, don't tell me to mask up. You keep your butt home. I had a microbiologist mother who's worked in pulmonary hospitals. And we know like a mask is like using prison bars to keep a mosquito out. Okay. And you know, we can't talk sense into people who don't know. I know there's a lot of paid microbiologists that came out and said a lot of, of fake news, um, that were paid to do so. But you know, any genuine microbiologist, like 
they knew that the whole thing was ridiculous that that gave people a false sense of safety um and i don't think that you know COVID's a joke my daughter has permanent asthma from it and we had a doctor kind of like medically gaslight her and try to call it um anxiety because that's how male doctors treat women um i've had them do the same thing to me like constantly downplaying my pain and suffering so um anyway when i was in master gardeners i remember like um for however much volunteer work we did like the city would donate so much money to master gardeners okay like i didn't like master gardeners because 99.9 of the time they were growing plants that were useless like for decorative purposes which would actually increase pesticide and herbicide and and be less likely to help nature more likely to hurt nature so i didn't care for it um but i feel like you guys could push like you know why are we not having volunteers that are getting money and funding from the local city government or county or state to grow more um you know community gardens and have chickens in them and i'm sorry but the government this tyrannical government fear mongering and making us scared of the avian flu and trying to kill people's chickens and stuff just like cut it out you know i'm so fed up like if this is if we could all just tell the government cut it out like we're, we're done we don't care that aliens exist we've known for years we don't care we don't care if anything we hope the aliens will come down and stop you guys like we need we need some extraterrestrial help right now we need some supernatural intervention and some armageddon stuff to come stop our tyrannical governments i mean you know most all the world leaders are greedy and insane nut jobs and every corporation in the united states is pretty much owned by the rothschild family that has a babel tower i mean look it up guys their biz tower or whatever's like a tower of babylon and the evil psychopaths everything is run by blackrock and vanguard and for those of you who are politically affiliated in the two-party system and you actually fall for that bs both trump and biden have blackrock members on their administration okay blackrock is owned by vanguard in every single corporation their stock is owned by it to me i personally feel like agorism and permaculture and intentional communities need to take over because like i'm not speaking as some radical here this is common sense okay look at look at nature every single animal every animal every insect every plant you're kind of born or you you develop or you sprout or whatever with the intention of living with the intention of taking care of yourself a place to live a safe place to sleep and fresh abundant food and water is our god-given right the government can't take that from us like we're letting them if you see what i'm saying we're letting them we're letting corporations tell us we're not good enough to afford a place to sleep to afford food to afford water or shelter this is a lie we don't need the government okay they need us the parasite needs us you guys do you need to rise up and stand up for yourselves more and more and more there's not a whole lot i can do as one disabled woman but especially those men out there like get out of your you know your ass and your sexual addictions and your pornography ruining your families i know that sex drugs and war make the most money like grow up and stand up for your women and children and quit copping out and I'm, you know, I feel so bad that most of the women on these TikTok videos, it's mostly women that are complaining about how they can't afford to feed their kids or anyone. And when I go to grocery stores, most of the old men, they don't know where they are. I'll watch all the, like any man that's like of younger age, like say 40s, 50s, 30s, they're busy looking at me instead of their wife. And if they're old they don't know where they are their mouth is hanging open they're just floundering and their their wife all the boomer generation the women are controlling the situation they're the ones pushing the buggy they're the ones thinking and the husband just flopping around like he doesn't know where he's at you know he doesn't even care i mean the men in this country are placid and not all of them i know there's some great ones out there there's a lot of agorist movements going on um some come from the conservative libertarian some of them come from more of the left side 
and they're trying to fight for the future okay and like all the men who are not who are just like kind of just barely getting by and they don't care as long as they can go get their taco bell for lunch every day like i'm sorry but this is why in nature you know um most males are killed <laughs> you know you look at like a whether it's roosters or or if it's a deer or bear or anything else it's kind of like they will fight over territory and mating and it's like if you are a blah, 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 male you're likely to get fought and and kicked out and thrown out and the lone wolves you ever hear men well i'm an alpha i'm a lone wolf it's like lone wolves lost hun like, like they're kicked out because they they lost the fight that's nothing to brag about so we need more people to rise up for real we do and having a place to sleep having the ability to eat and drink and keep your children safe that's it's in our innate human nature to take it to um have it it's there's like if, if people have to get go hungry enough people are starting to hurt enough now where they're seeing this i've always known this my whole life that this modern way of life is completely ridiculous and it's it's a lie it's tyranny it's like indentured servitude okay there's no way property taxes was ever okay ever nobody should ever be able to take away where you live period uh, you go look in the mountains here in the washita mountains and you know how the government brags about how they are preserving land no they're not they're profiting off of it um i i think i'd heard that biden wants to take like 30 percent of all land by 2030 so they can preserve it it's like are you kidding me have you seen what they've done here they've destroyed the washita mountains half of it is pine plantations now where they clear cut and then plant new pine it's disgusting it's shameful and then they also even lease out like i guess to mines for crystal mines where they blow up the ground for crystals if you pay to play enough the government will let you use the land they're supposed to protect they don't protect it they use it for profit the second biggest landowner in my state is bill gates he doesn't know how to take care of it either if both the government and bill gates cared so much about you know the environment they probably should actually seek indigenous cultures and ask them how to take care of it you know i know the indigenous people in the united states um all of the native american tribes whatever you want to call it you know how that goes these days um a lot of them have lost hope and a lot of them are struggling but they're the ones that have the answers and how to protect the earth here they've done it they didn't leave nasty footprints or um, destruction of waterways you know i the what is another thing biden's pushing for like electric cars it's like are you kidding me again do you guys really think electric vehicles are the way to go maybe a lot of you don't know this but i have family that lives in northern arkansas near the white river and they have to use so much freaking herbicide to keep the turbines running that um run these dams to make electricity that they're the lakes are like dead and some people are still fish in them and um i'm like i wouldn't want to eat fish out of that there's so much herbicide in those fish it's disgusting it's creepy they they you can't even have like uh plants growing in it okay it's disgusting and these herbicides are going to make its way down into the ocean and you wonder why coral reefs are dying like nitrogen from all the factory farming the herbicides i mean it is destroying everything and this is why i kind of get fed up with you know not just the tyranny but like the people that don't educate themselves enough and um you just have to want to educate yourself there's no way that you don't know this stuff unless you just you know i know a lot of people have been so kind of enslaved their whole life from school to minimum wage jobs or whatever that they've never had the time to really look at this stuff but you know how like the hollywood elites and the government wants you to feel sorry for the rainforest and it produces our oxygen and blah 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 blah, blah right um again it's not like i'm saying that oil is great it's not like i'm saying we shouldn't protect the rainforest but over 50 percent. what about 60 percent? because i i homeschool my kids and so you know we've done marine biology and so this is how we've learned a lot of this i've taught them college courses and um over 60 percent, i think at least of our oxygen is made by phytoplankton 
in the ocean. So when you guys disregard how making electricity and factory farms and monocultures and these big giant corporate um, subsidized farms that make your McDonald's burger cheaper than a salad, if you guys don't realize that that is killing the ocean is going to be what depletes your oxygen. And then we have, what do you call it? Um, cloud seeding everywhere. And you don't have to believe me with what weather modifications of you think I'm a crackpot, go watch monkey works. Okay. He talks about this stuff. Um, they're cloud seeding all the freaking time. And I actually really think that like, how is this not illegal? How are we as people not revolting over that alone? Because as hot as it is right now, come on, we all know when you mess with things, you make it worse. It's a lot like um, so many of things, things that we're doing, the government, I should say, and big corporations are doing could destroy the Gulf Stream, which could in turn um, take away the temperate climate of the UK. And with this warm weather that we have going on, it's, oh, it's the hottest it's ever been and it's all over carbon emissions and blah, 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 again, okay? Carbon emissions is probably one of the least of our worries. Is it something we should consider? Sure, sure. You know, we should consider all things for the environment. I'm not, um, you know, one of these, like, climate deniers. I'm also not a climate change, like where I push the, the government agenda, okay? My concern is that this cloud seeding that's been going on for quite a while so that rich people can have a cloudy day. Y'all do know that, right? Like if you have a lot of money and you want to go surfing or you want to go have a nice picnic on the beach, you can pay these companies to bring clouds your way. If they're like bringing clouds and reducing temperatures somewhere, how is that going to affect the rest of the world? Is the earth going to overcompensate? Because you're sending mixed signals. It's like when people have like, you know, artificial sweeteners all the time and then they still wonder how they have diabetes or something. And sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't, right? So what is your, if your, is your body going to overcompensate? Is the earth's body going to overcompensate for these cloud seeding technologies? Is it going to get hotter and hotter the more that they, you know, pay some company to give them a cloudy picnic? Like this is insane what our governments and our corporations are doing to us. It's wrong. It's illegal. They're criminals and they know it. And, you know, it's, um, I know it's so funny because like what I'm saying would have sounded so radical 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Um, you know, my parents even tried to call me an anarchist when I was in high school because I challenged their view on politics of the two party system. And I was raised in the conservative, uh, right wing Christian, you know, community. And, um, I don't really, you know, I don't want to say like, I want to say it's pretty fake to me, to be honest. I mean, like even my own parents covered up molestation that happened to me and they act like they're these good Christians, but I've been abused by all of my partners who were raised Southern Baptist too. And, um, I just had to realize, you know, that my parents have kind of enabled abuse. And this is kind of the skeletons in the right wing's closet they don't want to talk about. So, you know, I've called out some stuff on the left and Biden. I'm calling out the right, too, because, you know, the Southern Baptist Convention will go down to New Orleans and complain about the LGBTQ stuff. Right. And it's like, clean up your own mess. Like they, they have no problem. They love to say, oh, well, black neighborhoods need to clean up their own crime and quit complaining about anyone else. But why don't they clean up their own mess? Like, I would say uh, porn addiction and sexual coercion and betrayal trauma and uh, spousal rape and spousal abuse among conservative Christian men are through the roof. And you can go watch guys like Chris Prather and all of these other conservative guys bragging. I mean, God, I think the last time I heard something from him, I just, I could never watch him again. Wanting to shove his face in a Mexican girl's titties. Like these are his words. Okay. Um, he doesn't want them crossing the border, but if they'll show their tits, then he, he's okay with that. Um, and he wants to go follow them on OnlyFans and stuff. And like for me personally, the amount of abuse that I've gone through, um, anyone justifying like OnlyFans and pornography and, and so many of these other things, like I think there is a special place in hell for you, to be honest, because <laughs> like 
I, I will never have my health back. You know, I have so many health issues. I have adhesions and bowel obstructions that are so painful that, um, I used to say I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy, but now I kind of think I do wish it on all the perverts out there. I wish they got a taste of their own medicine. I absolutely love predator catcher videos. Um, I just wish YouTube wasn't suppressing them so that they could, you know, I mean, we all know that YouTube's crooked too. And Rumble, I mean, God, Rumble acts like they're great, but they have a bunch of nasty crud on their stuff too. Um, They do give you a little bit more freedom of speech on there, but they also give the perverts a lot too. Um, Now, I really, I kind of want to like push you guys, anyone who's still listening this far, you know, like, when are, you know, even if you're awake, when are the people around you going to wake up? When are people going to wake up and no longer tolerate this? Because when I was younger, I remember thinking eventually people are going to get fed up. And when it starts to hurt enough, people are going to going to stand up and say something. And now they are. People are hurting a lot. And I've been waiting for the day because I always knew that this modern way of life was not sustainable, was not healthy. Uh, Working in cubicles and stock markets and all this stuff, like to me, I think all corporations and stock markets should be illegal. Call me an extremist again if you want. I think that they're criminal. They're crooked. You know, there should be no such thing as a corporation because it's kind of like a government entity. It should be, you know, an individual ownership or something. And I'm just saying it because look at what it's doing. And then uh, stock markets, oh my God, if anything has destroyed the world is that because the elites run it, you know? And I mean, you don't have to agree with me. I don't care. I know my dad's building his wealth off the stock markets and, you know, he also built a lot of his wealth off of big oil. So, and he is one of those boomers that pulled the ladder up behind him. I mean, he knew exactly what he was doing and they don't care. They watch me suffer. They know me and my kids are struggling. We live in a house with bare cement. We don't even have decent floors right now. Okay. Um, we are struggling so bad. And I, when they were little and I begged to get to go back to college or to have a job, you know, my mom was like, oh no, I can't help. No, I can't. Do- oh no, I'm just too fragile for that. Even though she'd beg us to go stay with her at least twice a month or she was having withdrawals because she needed to see the kids and dote on them and spend all, you know, how those upper class wives are, they spend all their money at Target and they look at you like go to hell if you end up in the same aisle as them. Like that. my mom was one of those. And, uh, she just needed me there all the time because she didn't want to have to do any of the dirty work. And so I did everything I could to take care of my kids. And I'm trying to go back to school for something now because uh, because of the disability from my last abusive husband, I um, can't hardly work out because I have those adhesions and I have a lot of other disgusting stuff happening to me. You want to know. Um, And it's just the pain is just, oh, you wouldn't believe it. But I have to be able to take care of my kids. You know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to go back to school for a certificate because I cannot afford a degree. <laughs> like I cannot get in that much debt. I can't do it. And there's like a slim chance I might just make it and get a job before, you know, my kids are grown. So I'm suffering and even with my suffering and my disability, I can go out in my backyard and pick some field peas and okra and know I'll be okay. I can go in and butcher a chicken or have some eggs. And I worked very hard to get there. And it was certainly by the sweat of my brow and with no help from anybody. Um, I will say that if people were to get together and, you know, it doesn't have to be like a radical all or nothing, even though I'm calling out what tyranny is and what is not okay. I feel like a balanced approach would be, and by the way, if any of you think I'm some kind of psycho terrorist, I'm pretty much like, I would say the closest political alignment I have is agorism, which is peaceful revolution. So, um, judge away if you want, but I don't have any desire to harm anyone. Um, I suppose I do think (laughs) creepers and perverts and the political elite should be round up and hung. But I think wouldn't that be nice if like we had like this extraterrestrial high court that was to put all of these leaders on trial and find them guilty and deal with them, deal with them. Right. Um, But, you know, for me personally, I do feel like this is why it's so silly 
that, you know, we should, we don't even really need to be fighting over this. Like it's so simple of just literally demand to take the land back because the government has no right to own it. They really don't. I mean, it's not theirs. If the government took the land, we gave it to them. We literally, we, we laid down, we let them roll over us and back up and roll over us again and again and again. And we just lay there and take it. And I hate to say it, but really, the men have really let us down, haven't they? I mean, here I am, a disabled woman saying this stuff, but I have yet to see any men from my generation give two shits about anything except their addictions. And if y'all are wondering what my generation is, I am 42. I'm literally an elder millennial, like one month from being Gen X. So um, I would say like my generation of men, everyone I've known besides being abusive, and I'm not saying all men my age are this way. I, you guys you have to get honest with yourselves and know that this is, this is a fact that most of the men in my generation are placid and brain dead and they don't care about anything. They really don't. And I'm not saying that, um, you know, that they're bad. Oh, some of them really are bad, but I, I feel like it's kind of like, um, you know, they really were brainwashed in school. And I don't know a single one of them that wasn't put on um, stimulants for ADD. Okay. This was in the 90s even. And every single guy I know of that was put on Ritalin and eventually Adderall, it's like their empathy just like disappeared even if they were only on it for a few months, it's like no empathy left. Like they're all like these, these like zombies of what was once a person. And um, same thing. Like if you look at like meth heads and like uh, crack heads and things, you know, a lot of times it seems like the longer they're on like a, a stimulant type drug, the less empathy they have for other people. And again, I'm not saying that every single one is that way. I'm just saying I've seen it. And every single guy I've known for my generation, like they don't, um, they don't even vote. They don't care. It's not because they're an activist or an agorist or anything. They just they just don't care. Um, they go to work if they if they want to work. Someone don't even work. But if they do work, they want to spend every spare penny that they have on alcohol or drugs. And then if they can scrape any change after that, they want like fast food or junk food or easy food to eat. And that's it. That's all they care about. I, I mean, I know that there's good men out there my age. I know there is. That's wonderful. You know, great. There needs to be. But I really think, you know, there's always probably been a smaller percentage of individual thinkers. And it's gotten even smaller with the kind of brainwashing in school. Um, I know, I guess... People would call me neurodivergent because I was, um, you know, my parents never wanted to get me diagnosed with anything, um, but I have never really understood like uh, women. <laughs> okay, so if you guys think I'm bashing men, I don't even get women. I'm sorry. Everywhere I've worked, women have done everything they can to backstab me and get me fired or like gossip or I don't know. Like let's put it this way: it seems like. A lot of men in this country are kind of like brain dead. But then the women are all like evil, psychotic, conniving, vindictive psychopaths. Like they plan, like they really plan like total domination or something. I don't know. It's like, is it kind of like our instincts have kicked in where women are kind of behaving like they're in a harem, right? And it's like the job, the workplace is their sugar daddy. And so they're all fighting and scraping for the most powerful position. And I don't know. I mean, I, I just don't get like modern society and everyone's priorities being so backward. It's really weird to me why no one has ever questioned like this is wrong, you know, work to spend, to spend, to work, to work, to spend, to spend, to work. And you're spinning your wheels for what? I mean, life would be really, really enjoyable and easy if you would just say, you know what, government, all the land that you took all the land that Bill Gates took, we're taking it back and we're going to go build cabins on it and we're going to homestead and there's nothing you can do about it. Um, you know, it's like, I'm not saying that would work. You know how that is. I'd probably go crazy if you did that, but it kind of needs to happen. You know, maybe there will be an intervention somewhere. Supernatural could be like a heavenly intervention, you know, that, a natural disaster is that breaks down the government so people can do that. But really, we were never meant to, um, 
be afraid of not having a place to live or food. Like, you know, people say we shouldn't be in fight or flight because there's no tiger chasing us. And I'm like, uh, yeah, there is. It's called a tax collector. It's called having to, you know, make sure your vehicle is registered and make sure it's inspected and make sure you have house insurance and make sure you paid your taxes and make sure you did this and make sure you paid the electric bill and make sure you did that, make sure you do this. And it's like, those are all the tigers and lions and bears. We're in a constant state of fight or flight. We never have that opportunity to like get into like a parasympathetic state where we are calm and relaxed. Autoimmune diseases and chronic diseases are through the roof from stress. And people are coping through either addiction or disassociation or both. And it's not okay. And we have like so much, like we're rich, like, uh, what would you call it? Nature wise, we're rich. That is so beautiful where I live hot as hell but get up early in the morning or morning or go out late in the evening. And it's, it's beautiful and it's lush and there's so much we could grow here. If we just had a handful of people in every town to start these community gardens, and I know that there are some towns doing it, which is great. And of course we do have a lot of people who are stuck in this modern mentality of, I don't want to eat peas and rice. <laughs> Well, they need to wake up, don't they? Because, I mean, you can't live your life eating boxed crap. Like, you can't live your life synthetically. I mean, you can if you want to. But, you know, um, there is no reason for anyone to be hungry. There just isn't. There just isn't. We should have community chickens. We should have community gardens and um, ample food for everybody. And we should be able to live a peaceful, slow life if we want to. Like, I've thought about this, too, because I can't solve the world's problems, right? But why am I bringing this up and there's not enough people bringing this up? Like, everyone's complaining about how hard they have it, but nobody's pushing for change, like genuine change. Um, what I think is strange is, you know, we could have, like, what if this is, I know that the government isn't going to settle for this because they're too greedy, but I feel like, why can't we have like a truce, like a balance? You know what I mean? Like if the greedy government wants to make money off of creating suffering and indentured servitude, the same people who really love having a sugar daddy called the government, like micromanaging their every move can live in big inner cities. And then outside of the inner cities can be more of, you know, more village style where people live like the old ways where, um, we, we do what we're good at, not what we're forced to do. I mean, to be honest, it's absolutely ridiculous that it's illegal to homestead. And what I mean by that is it's illegal to just go out and build a home. Like, that's, that is tyranny. I don't care if you guys agree with me or not. It's tyranny, okay? You, you don't you ever see anyone try to catch a bird out in nature and say, you can't build a nest here unless I say so. You can't have a nest anywhere unless I say so. I'm going to track you and follow you and you have to pay me taxes or you can't have a nest. Like, I'm sorry, but we are still like animals. We're somewhere in between angels and animals. So it seems right. Because we have the ability to have the written word and to, because of that written word and even numbers are like a language, we can create so many amazing things. And so we can advance. The problem is, is we still have animal instincts and needs. I mean, you can just look at that with all the, you know, the creeper pervs out there saying, oh, well, sex is a, it's a primal need. And I'm like, you're right. It probably is a primal. I mean, they say women are hormonal, which I know they are, but aren't men too? Because they're walking around in a constant state of like needing to drain the lizard or they're like all like angsty and, you know? And so it's like, okay, I get that you have needs, but in nature, you fight for that need. No animal goes and like watches other animals do it. Like, have you ever seen that? And that the weirdest thing that human men, sometimes women do too, where they have to watch other people do the nasty. It's like, what is wrong with them? Like they're like regressing, <laughs> like they're lower than Neanderthals. Okay. You don't go out there and watch animals. Like I've never seen. And most of the time, like mating for animals is like one and done. They get it out of their system and they move on. It's just, it is what it is. It's a fact of life. It, it's just, it's a dirty deed. But only humans want to drag it out and like experience like pressure and, 
you know, let's just get all in it and let's, you know, watch others. It's just, it's sick. It's really sick. And <laughs> I don't know. I really think that there's something seriously wrong with a lot of people today. <laughs> I don't really like, I don't like most of modern society because like I said, a lot of the women are vindictive and psychopaths and they will, they fight tooth and nail over a job like it's nothing because they need that money and independence. And then um, there's not a lot of men who are really awake right now. Like they really are on autopilot, which is sad, you know, but there are some amazing men and women out there. It's just that there's like small numbers of them that are truly intelligent and thinking for themselves. And we need you guys to step up to the plate and wake people up. Like if people get to hurting enough, they're not going to be able to numb the pain anymore with addictions. If they get to hurting enough, they're not going to be able to fight their way to the top at work by backstabbing other women because there's going to be no more advancement to make. So I just think that um, if any of you out there have ever been hungry or know anyone who's hungry or having fear they're going to lose their home, like more and more people need to step up and speak up, speak out and raise a little bit of hell, honestly. And like I said, it doesn't have to be violent. It most certainly should be to me peaceful because if the government wants to get violent, that's on them. That's them being tyrannical. You know, if YouTube wants to, if corporations want to be violent and attack us, then that's them being violent, not us. Um, if we were to go and just all of us, like I had heard someone on this TikTok person saying, you know, everyone should just quit. They can't, they can't like, you know, get us all if we all quit, you know, jobs or whatever. It's like, yeah, if, if like people all over the country started moving into the national forest or something, what are they going to do? <laughs> like, what are they going to do exactly? And, um, I do think a balanced way would be to, fight for more intentional communities and agorist communities, permaculture, polyculture communities, community gardens, and also fight for the right to have like permanent living quarters. There's no reason why we should feel like we can't afford a place to live. Rent is an illusion. Okay. Why do you think our ancestors came to the U S like, I understand that the narrative today is that white people are bad and they came to the U S to steal land from natives. Um, but that's because the elites want everyone to believe that because it was the elites that did it. Okay. Um, most of the original Europeans that came here and even many people that came here up into the 1900s were like refugees. They really were. Our ancestors were tired of never being, I mean, look at how my Irish and Scottish ancestors were complete. And even the poor British people completely the terrified of not being able to feed their families because the British government was taking everything from them. Those are refugees. The problem is, is it's just like today. A lot of people don't want refugees in this country. And why do you think they don't? Because they know they bring their problems with them, which is exactly what our ancestors did. They brought their problems with them. They wanted to come here and start over. But the same like greedy parasitic elites of the old Babylonian empire, the Rothschild empire, the monarchical empire followed us here. And by the time we even wrote the Declaration of Independence, it had already been infiltrated, I am sure. And um, they destroyed the country from the inside out, from the get-go. And, I mean, you look at how they talk about the Civil War and, oh, they did it to free slaves. But the same Union, the same Union Army went out west and killed hundreds of thousands of Native American women, children, babies, doctors. Sorry, doctors, but I was thinking in my head about these doctors that had written how terrified they were when they went out there because they had treated men in the Civil War, but they had never seen wounds like they did when they saw like pulling bullets out of babies and stuff. That was it was like they were traumatized. Uh, a lot of doctors, a union doctors got PTSD because they never thought that people could be that inhumane to kill infants. Um. And that same union, not long after, went and took over Hawaii, right? Um, now we call it the United States of America government. We, we are such a great society. We care so much about the world. We're going to give a whole bunch of money to Ukraine, even though we're trillions of dollars in debt. 
And even Trump himself put us in more and more debt to my great, great, great grandkids um, demise. Supposedly we owe it, which is a load of shit. Can you, can any of us go to our credit card company and say, yeah, max out my credit card. I need some more money. <laughs> like, no, it doesn't work that way. Okay. Um, you might get to bump your credit card a couple of times and then you're done. Uh, but our government can do that. It was funny because I had read, I was looking up like how the U.S. voted no to food being a human right. And one of these answers on Quora was like, well, you have the right to grow your own food and you have the right to buy your own food, but you're not entitled to anyone else's food or that would be slavery. And I was like, wait a minute. So you're admitting that the government is enslaving us <laughs> because everything they take is ours everything. You know, um, I don't feel bad for anybody who has to be on food stamps or health care from the government because it was ours first to begin with. They freaking milked us dry. Okay. I'm, I'm supposed to be on Medicaid. They switched me to something else, even though I'm disabled and I don't have any money right now, but it's not like I could use it. You know, they always have a reason not to pay. So it's like, it's not like they ever did anything for me. Um, I will say that we do honestly need to find a balance. We need to find a balance in between, you know, standing up to our government and standing up for our own sovereignty, our own sovereignty. Every single human being deserves a place to live, a place to eat and a place to sleep. And it's not stealing from anyone else. We're not allowed to go out in the woods and build our own place. We're not. We're, we're not. It's illegal. Okay. We're not allowed to just have land, to just live. We have to pay everything with money. Money is monopoly money. It's fake. It's not even real. It's ridiculous. It's like a scam. Okay. Money was created by people with no talent, with a desire to control because they had nothing of value to trade. The only thing they had was being a dictatorship. And for those of you that are like, that's not fair by God, you should have to pay for land, a dirty, dirty, dirt. It's like, are you one of those people that happened to make money when it was a prosperous country and now you're hoarding it all and you could care less about those suffering right now? Because the whole world is suffering. I mean, our country is starting to crumble, which we knew it would eventually anyway. But there's so many places that have it so much worse right now. It's not even like not even okay. And if you manage to thrive in a very sick society, maybe you're a pretty sick individual, you know, maybe you're a psychopath, maybe you're a narcissist, maybe you are um, part of the problem. You know, I have a very simple needs. I want to live in nature. Whenever I'm in nature, I feel so um, healing my PTSD heals. I just be standing out in nature around the trees and listening to the animals. And if you go hiking or you just play in the garden, it's like, I feel my body healing. And every time I have to go to Walmart and watch the greedflation get worse and worse and worse. So the heiress bitch can have her $300 million yacht. Um, it's stressful. It's painful. I'm tired. I'm drained. I'm exhausted. I have to spend like over a hundred dollars for eight items, you know? I mean, it's, it's ridiculous and they monopolize everything. We don't even have, we have one tiny like local grocery store and we'll go there and get what's on clearance so that we can feed the family because it's cheaper. Walmart doesn't do clearance anymore. <laughs> like their clearance is like not a clearance. It's like their clearance food is more expensive than it was normally before COVID. <laughs> so, um, I, I guess I went all over the place. I have a lot to say. Um, I might have ruffled some feathers and I don't really care because if I ruffled your feathers, I can almost guarantee you that you could care less if you ruffle mine or anybody else's, you know, the easily offended, like don't care. You know, I'm tired of having to walk on eggshells for some of you freaks out there. Like it's just, you're not that special. <laughs> Let's put it that way. You're not that special. Um, all of us deserve to be heard. All of us deserve to, have a say in what happens in our own life. And um, I promise you, the, the 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 views I have now, I mean, I've always pretty much had, um, the government doesn't, 
you know, we don't need the government needs us. And it's, it's a parasite. It's evil. I've always believed that. Um, it's obvious. I mean, you know them by their fruit. And uh, more and more people are beginning to see that, which is great. But even if nobody saw things the way I view them, I in 10 or 20 years, they most certainly will. <laughs> I think I'm ahead of my time a little bit because I spent most of my youth observing and watching while other kids were busy, you know, reading highlights or watching Nickelodeon. And, you know, I would read Nat Geo's and, um, and just, I was really into more adult things when I was young, which is a typical kind of neurodivergent thing. Like I, I just, I was considered really mature when I was young. And now that I'm older, people probably think I'm immature and I don't care. <laughs> um, I, I learned a lot from my grandparents. My, my parents thought they were, my parents still do think they're better than their parents, which is ridiculous. I don't, what is up with the boomer arrogance, you know? Um, but they think that they're so advanced. I mean, like, um, my grandparents survived the great depression and world war II, And I just remember observing everything about them. I'd spend my summers with them and, Uh, We go visit my great grandmother who, you know, um, survived all that too. And she, she wouldn't waste a piece of white bread. You know, if she had one piece of white bread left, she'd fold it up a napkin and save it. And she never had any stress or worry because, um, when you don't spend money, it's like you have so much more security. And I learned frugality from my grandparents. I understood the value of homesteading too. Um, my grandfather was a veterinarian and a uh, very struggle life for them when they were young because in the old days in the South, people just shot their dogs, right? So he worked in chicken plants a lot up at three in the morning and worked till 10 o'clock at night on animals after he got home from chicken plants. And um, they grew their own food. So did my mom's parents. And, you know, my parents looked down on them of, oh, those are simple ways. That's really hard work for very little money. And, you know, my parents worked very hard to have the egotistical American dream, which is as much money as possible and um, the least amount of work to have to do. You know, they just want to retire in comfort, which they did. And they did like most uh, narcissistic kids did too. They sold all the land of my grandparents, you know, both, uh, my grandparents on both sides had about 80 to hundred acres in, uh, Southern Mississippi, Southeastern Mississippi. Um, um, I am old school, like Southern, like I watched Gone with the Wind a lot when I was a little kid. And I remember thinking that, yeah, land is the most valuable thing that we can have because one day the government is going to take it all. And I just remember wanting so bad to save that land, but all of their kids, just wanted to sell the land, cut it up and get all the cash they could for it. Right. And what did my parents do? They went and bought seven acres in the Ozarks because it looks pretty and it's on a steep cliff full of rocks and there's absolutely almost nothing they can grow there. It's like completely, um, impossible. So they sold some of the most fertile land in the country and traded it for rocks because it was, you know, made them feel fancy and nice fancy, you know, $300,000 house. And of course that's, that's small potatoes compared to what a lot of people are buying now. But, um, I just can't understand the priorities of that generation seeing that their parents went through the depression in world war II and still not prioritizing land and, and growing food. I'm like, are you out of your mind? Do you really think that what you're doing is sustainable? Right. And, uh, I watched how like they, they went without a lot, but yet they were so rich in other ways and I valued it. I, I valued it. I remember eating so much fresh food out of the gardens and how smart they shopped and um, how little they needed and how they made things last. And, you know, we really are scammed out of a lot where everything is so disposable now. Like we just had another microwave break and it's like, they're so cheap. Um, it, everything is cheap now, you know, everything. It's like coffee pots. They break down all the time. Refrigerators, they break down. Everything lasts, what, two or three years, right, guys? It's unreal. And how are corporations getting away with this? You know, how are they not being sued for intentionally making crap? 
And I don't even like shopping at Dollar Tree and stuff unless it's something I know I can keep for years. Why buy disposable goods that's going to break and put forever plastics into the ground? So see, I don't really, I don't really side with the conservative right or the left. I, I, I'm kind of like, you know, uh, definitely uh, more in the libertarian stance of I don't care what your religion is, your sexuality, you do you boo, so long as you don't hurt anyone else, right? Um, I definitely don't like some of the, the racism and things that go on in the places I've grown up. Uh, but I will say that, I don't know, I, I guess agorism is the closest thing. And I don't even have the money to be a technical agorist. A lot of agorists are doing like Bitcoin and like cryptocurrency and things, uh, black market, gray market stuff. Um, but I do think we need to have a peaceful revolution. I do. I think enough is enough. The government has terrorized us and um, turned a blind eye to our suffering enough. I truly don't feel like any single person that has a government job should ever make more than like um, average working wages. Then we wouldn't have these assholes there. And I mean, I'm talking literally, there's no freaking way they should have what they have. I mean, if you have, okay, this is one last point I'll make and then I got to go because I have a headache. Um, you know uh, how a lot of the younger kids are blaming capitalism, right? And I don't really feel like it's capitalism that's the problem. Um, I know there's anarcho-capitalists, there's agorists and things, and any of them to me are better than the two-party system. But... Uh, I don't believe we have capitalism, to be honest. And if there was one thing I learned from my stupid economics class or business ethics or something was the definitions for socialism and communism, which you cannot find on Google because Google will lie to you, okay? Um, communism, the government owns like everything, all the private sector, and socialism is where it owns more than 50%. And a lot of these kids that are complaining about capitalism don't realize that, like, you're, they're brainwashed by the government to blame capitalism, not the government. And they're blaming capitalism and corporations, which definitely are part of the problem are corporations. But um, they want kids to be dumb enough to vote in socialism to fix <laughs> capitalism, which is like, you do realize youngins out there that we already have in the closet socialism okay if people that work for the epa the dea and all of the other three letter um you know scam artists out there are also working for the biggest corporations in the world too you know you have the same people lobbying and working for like big pharmaceuticals and for like monsanto and bear and tyson and all of these major corporations have the same people working for the government as they do major corporations this is conflict of interest it should be illegal it should be a prison term for these people but they do it all the time and no one's batting an eye okay this criminal it should be illegal and that is not capitalism, okay? Capitalism is supposed to be where the little guy can work their way up just like the big guy. They have done everything they can to suppress us so the little guy cannot work. You can't even sell a cupcake without labeling it and doing this and doing that and doing this. You can't sell a cupcake to your neighbor. They put rules and regulations on the little men that big corporations do not have to follow. That is tyranny. That is tyranny. There is absolutely no reason why the government should regulate every little thing that the little man does. They need to be regulating themselves more and corporations more and us less. The government works for us, not the other way around. But as you guys know, that's not really how it's panning out, is it? So I really don't feel like socialism obviously is not the answer. Um you guys have got to want to shrink the government. You have got to want to um, completely overhaul society and want to be more independent and take your power back. And like I said, we could have big inner cities where everything is micromanaged by corporations and governments or something if that's what they really have to have because they'll, you know, how narcissists are, you take away everything, they're liable to go blow up the world, right? Um, 
but we should be able to have designated areas for those of us who don't need the government. Like we can't partake in the government's, um, what do you call it stuff if we decide to live on our own, but you also can't intervene with us. Like we need to be able to have safe, um, locations that don't have government intervention. I've also thought about this too, which would be actually very um, interesting. Okay. I know I said I was going to let you go, so I'm going to hurry. Um, would it, wouldn't it be cool if society was actually not so backwards and we actually had kind of like experimental cities, experimental societies where um, we completely have like a city, town, county that votes the way they want to do things and it can be very, very different than other people. But if it works, it works. And if you like it, move there. If you don't, then move somewhere else. Like it would be inter just like in the old days where people had villages and had communities and had um, different clans and whatnot. And some of them had ways that you would agree with and some didn't. Sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. Like I always thought it would be really interesting to have a literal like social experiment and have like a socialist um say a full-blown socialist county and a full-blown libertarian county and a full-blown agorist county and kind of like just watch them you know over several decades and spans and generations and kind of keep note and learn what what worked and what didn't but we never get to do any of these experiments because we're too busy being like terrorized by our own government and by corporations and you know employers and things like it's absolutely disgusting to me that like people can't afford to pay their mortgage. So they need two jobs, but both employers are like, well, you have to put my hours first. And so people are torn in between, you know, how do you work for two different employers when both of them, they, I think that should be illegal too. When employers absolutely refuse to work with their schedule. I understand some small businesses can't, but these major corporations like home Depot and places that won't freaking work with your schedule, they have more than enough funding to work with people's schedules but they just like oh i'm only going to give you 15 hours a week but i'm going to assign your hours and if you can't make it you're fired like they're all major assholes you know so there's my little rant and take it or leave it <laughs> and if you think you have better ideas than me then do something about it you know say something about it like go out there and make a difference i think more people that speak up and speak out and call out the tyranny and call out the um, destructiveness of the rich, greedy, evil elite, the better.